Honorable Mutuse for being courageous, for being focused, and I'm sure in honor of the history of this country, Mr. Mr. Speaker, and the history of the 13th Parliament, Mr. Mutuse, you will be appreciated. Mr. Speaker, having said that, I've also gone through uh, this impeachment clauses, Mr. Speaker. The 11 clauses, Mr. Speaker, are cogent, are rich in evidence, Mr. Speaker, and clearly demonstrate the actions, the omissions, the commissions of the Deputy President. Mr. Speaker, I've had an opportunity to reflect, because there's one thing that the DP has been using, that is a truthful man. I went back to the ironic definition, how a truthful man is supposed to be described in the Bible, in the Quran, in the civil society, Mr. Speaker. And in those definitions, Mr. Speaker, I have missed an iota of resemblance on anything that can, I can associate with those actions and the activities of the Deputy President, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this closes. We are a member of parliament. We, are, we as members of parliament, Mr. Speaker, our work is to protect the constitution. Our work is to oversight. And our work is to do one of these things that have been, have been demanded today by this impeachment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in all these clauses, the common denominator is the DP has abused this office through corruption, through tender pre-learning, through disparaging and disobeying his boss, through undermining devolution, and Mr. Speaker, equally also by being a threat to our sovereignty. Mr. Speaker, this country is a collection of many nation states. The Kikuyu nation, the Somali nation, the Luya nation, and this is what we are proud of, Mr. Speaker, and this is what constitutes the sovereign republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the other day, and I want to repeat this, and you will excuse me for saying this, this country has a very rich history. In 1982, one gallant son from northern Kenya called Gerald Mahmoud saved the Kenyans from militarism. And I think we all appreciate it. He's still alive. Mr. Speaker, in 2007, another general by the name General Muhammad Ali saved the Kenyans from the effects of the political term, the social political time of 2007. And Mr. Speaker, the post-election violence. In 2024, another son from another region Nurdin has also saved this country from the effects and activities of Rigji and his cohorts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that doesn't take away that doesn't take away the contributions of many other Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, in all this, what I have gathered, and we have been in Parliament together, we, we are doing a favor for Rigji. We are doing a favor for the executive, members of the executive. We must save Rigji from the members of the executive, the other members, because he's a threat to their continued performance of their job, Mr. Speaker. We must also save Rigji from the members of the judiciary because he keeps on attacking them, Mr. Speaker. We must also save Rigji from the members of the legislatures because he attacks them, Mr. Speaker. We must also save Rigji from the 47 tribes, Mr. Speaker, because he keeps on attacking them, Mr. Speaker. We must also save Rigji from the remnants of Mau Mau because he keeps on abusing their names, Mr. Speaker. We must save Rigji, Mr. Speaker, because he abuses our ladies, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we must also save Rigji from the people of Mount Kenya because he abuses their names and he wants to have them collide with other Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I salute them, Mr. Speaker. And finally, on that aspect, we must save himself because last night when I watched that teleprompter-driven press conference, Mr. Speaker. One thing that came to my mind is he was incriminating himself, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in all this, we have a president who has applied all his gingerly approach in managing the affairs of this nation, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, what is coming to mind is we have a DP who, in every statement that he, that he utters, abuses, uses the Constitution wrongly, threatens, and demeans everybody. And it's because of this, Mr. Speaker, that we as a parliament, we must go in history and support this impeachment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, finally, you have ruled on this. And I don't want my colleagues here actually to be threatened. What you are doing is right. Is this within your legislative right, Mr. Speaker? For those of us who have elected to support this by abandoning our signatures, should also be available 
to vote today in our numbers to impeach Rigji 